And a very good Saturday afternoon here. We're here with none other than the legend of Byron Bay and Gold Coast Rugby League up and down. Anyway, well, actually, you can count Brisbane as well. And the third episode of the Dwayne O podcast, I am D. Dwayne Neville, a.k.a. the the man himself, Dwayne O. And um, if you're listening to this on Anchor... Sorry, anchor.fm forward slash Duano, and you want to watch it on the YouTube page and see our mugs on it. Um, the link is in there. Uh, and if you're watching this and you want to listen to an audio format and listen to us while you're driving around up and down the Byron Bay coast, you just head over to Spotify, iTunes. The link is also there as well. No, Crossy, we're reunited, brother, and only what since September since we're last on a mic together. Mate, it's good to see you, Nev. Um, yeah. Obviously, caught up. Over the over the break, uh, yep. planning what we thought was going to be our 2020 and Triple RL commentary season, but yep. that's something we'll talk about later, no doubt. But um, yep. mate, yeah, good to be re- reunited back on the mic. And uh, mate, and you look like you had a busy. You're just looking at the backdrop. They having a busy busy Saturday morning, um, so to speak. Yeah, mate. You know me. I'm one of the great tradesmen of all time. <laughs> just been uh, hammering and doing it, mate. I wouldn't have a clue what's going on here. I've just had to. Um, jump in here to escape the, the children so um, <laughs> i thought it was the most peaceful spot i could find so um more or less uh yeah so um are you out trying to outdo um uh other co-commentator there shory for for um fingers in a few pies like because he does uber and stuff so you, <laughs> you so obviously you look after the kids you call the footy with yep. me on the weekend um during the winter and then you've um tradesman real estate agent footy coach what, what else is yeah. there Oh, mate, I don't know. I do it all. I do to do it all. <laughs> Not. Um, no, nah, mate, we're just sort of building a bit of a accommodation for mum here, which is um, okay. which is good, yeah. A bit of a, a legacy for, for dad, I suppose, or from dad. So, of course. Um, mate, that's that's happening at the moment. So, we're, that's exciting sort of for us and for her. And the kids are pretty pumped. So, it's just at the back of our place, mate. So, um, yeah, <laughs> which is good. We'll be able to have an in, inbuilt babysitter. Well, nice. And so, did yeah. this? When when did that come about? So, was this like a, a coronavirus project that came about? So, well, well, no footy on, obviously. So, is there? You feel is that now time to do something like that, or was this always in the um in the pipeline? Mate, it was always in the pipeline. But it's funny you mention that because it's um with this whole COVID nineteen thing, it's it's turned out that you know more people have had more time, haven't they? So, absolutely. Um, our backyard here before was, you know, full of trees and things like that. So we've been able to, well, I've been able to, mate, I'm not real handy, you know, so I've just been able to bloody knock down a few trees and prepare the, the site and, um, you know, do a bit of labouring and, and get on the wheelbarrow. That's about as much as I can do. But, um, yeah, it's but ordinarily I wouldn't have had the time to do it, mate. So that's been um, one of the, yeah, try to get a positive out of what's been a, a negative situation for most people, I suppose. And that's something that we... Me and um, Shory discussed on the third podcast in length about um, people finding time to do these sort of things. It's like, well, hello, we're doing. I mean, this pod. I actually said to him, this podcast was. I think I had this in the pipeline for about a decade, the last ten years, and I just yeah, didn't, know how, didn't know how the fuck I was going to do it. Um, but then yeah. obviously now, like Skype and Zoom and all those video, you know, talking softwares, and I was thinking, well. I, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. And, um, and it keeps us busy um, while the rugby league season's in recess and whatnot. So, um, so for you, obviously, this year as well, as I made mention, um, you scored the assistant coaching role with the East Tigers. Um, how did that come about? Mate, uh, Craig Hodges, who's the ex-Titans um, assistant for the last three years, of and course. also, well, he was the... Yeah, he was the interim coach um, for the last eight or nine games last year when, when Garth Brennan um, got sacked. Um, so Hojo, mate, there's a real funny backstory with Hojo. We, we go back a long way, even longer than what we both thought at the time. He, you, you remember Nev when I played in the '96 Grand Final for the Bay. I was when about we, to we make won. mention of that. Yeah. Uh, well, Hojo, uh, well, Hojo played for Morris Brothers that day. Funnily really? Enough. So, yeah, there's a really long backstory. Yeah. I, I just think I just think it's um. Uh, it all comes back to that grand final. I was about to actually just make mention of that. Um, obviously, another Lismore, um, you know, personality who was also our producer during the footy is, of course, Mr. Mark Goff. And when I made I announced that this is, you know, we're having the chat today, 
um, will being yesterday would have been this week being this weekend. Um, he's he called me about five minutes after I posted because when when he talked across, I said, "Well, <laughs> do it happening now." And I'm thinking, "Well, I think he's wondering if this is going to be the chat about." He always makes mention of that grand final in 1996. Um, so the, um, now's a chance to now to really tell the story about your end of it and breaking all those uh, Morris brothers um, and Mr. Goss heart. And, and yeah. Well, Goffey, it was funny, wasn't it, when you and I kicked off the commentary a couple of years ago and Goffey was, uh, of course, the producer and things. And um, I hadn't seen Goffey in years. And then he, he was quick to remind me that um, – he wasn't real happy with me from, from 1996. <laughs> so he didn't hold a grudge for long, Goffey, but he's a great man. And, um, yeah, it's always good to sort of catch up with him. But just quickly, just to finish off on the Hodjo chat, yeah. Um, yeah, we go back sort of that far, albeit I was only 17 playing that game. And um, Morris Brothers went on to win a heap of grand finals after after yeah. 96. But yeah. fast forward all these years, he was sort of coaching. And I, I'd been assistant coach at the Titans under-20s for four or five years. And, mm. um, yeah, he asked me to sort of come up well we sort of reunited in a funny way actually um but um and then i'm sort of doing a couple of days a week work in brisbane and um yeah. it was just a really good fit so um we're very similar in now um i suppose coaching philosophies and um and things like that so uh, any great fella and yeah we obviously get on well and being two northern rivers boys it yeah it was good you know so um the two northern rivers boys are sort of leading these tigers at the moment albeit we only got one game in this year before yeah, I know. coronavirus hit. And that, that was a win against, uh, was it? That was a win, mate. Yeah. Central, Central Comets, uh, yeah, North Hampton. So, yeah. Um, yeah, mate, we and, finished on top of the ladder, do I know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know if we get the trophy or not. Well, is that is that is, is that a Paramara analogy? Because um, when the um, obviously the, the competition's happening now, but um, yeah, I, I just remember um, when it was after two rounds and the Eels were on top, then too, it's like, oh, we're on top. Hey, give us the fucking trophy. <laughs> we'll take what we can get, mate. Nev, the Eels. That's right. I was going to so, say um, that. I was going to say that, man. That's um. So um, obviously you would have only just been in the little tacker back in the eighties when they won those um three in a row, and then the one in eighty six. Um. You feel like you're going to be, you know, celebrating a grand final of October 26. Mate, it was funny. I was watching it last night. They played Penrith last night, of course. And, um, yeah, I've been pretty impressed with how they've gone this year. That first half, I, I thought they were a bit underwhelming. And it's funny you ask that question because I was actually sort of asking myself that question. Could they, could they actually do it this year? I know we're only sort of five rounds in. But um, if you ask me in the first half, I still think no. I still think there's some teams that have got a little bit on them. You know, you look at the Roosters and mm. – even when Tedesco sort of rolls out for a week being injured and a fellow like Brett Morris goes back and plays fullback and they don't miss a beat, you know? Yeah. So I think if, if you're realistic, if, if that happened to the Eels and they were to lose Gutherson and they're, they're trying to replace a fullback for a week or so, you know, do they still go out and get the two points? Like I've still got queries around that. So yeah. mate, if I'm, if I'm optimistic, of course they bloody can win the comp. <laughs> um, but if I'm a realist, you know, I think if the Roosters stay healthy, like, we're we're heading into uncharted waters with them, looking at you know three in a three row, or whatever. Three in a row, yeah. and it's and it's yeah. like, um, I mean, I don't like seeing the Roosters win. I mean, especially seeing them fucking fifty nine nil last week. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it, it sort of puts a dampener on the competition. That's like yeah, just seeing the te- same teams win every year. It's like this, it's like the, yeah. the English Premier League, for example, right? And you. And um, oh, that's you got a spe- I think mean, you got a special guest in the background there. Some someone, some magpie or something tweeting in the background. But um, oh, these two. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it's it's like uh, the English Premier League. It's a, it's it's the same fucking four teams every year. You got Manchester United, yeah. Man City, Liverpool. Liverpool's gone on this big run, and then and it's like it's. I was just thinking about this about literally an hour before. We, you know, we kick this off. Is how good was it in two thousand and fucking sixteen? I mean, I'm no shark supporter, but mm. them to see them win, and I actually was there down in Sydney watching that um, when they beat Melbourne to win the grand final. And then the next day, oh, sorry, the day before, the Western Bulldogs win the fucking AFL grand yeah. final yeah. after like a fifty, what fifty, sixty years, and then then yep. Donald, then Donald Trump getting elected. You weren't expecting that, and then you look at the likes of um, what's another example the the Chicago Cubs in the in the in the baseball, and then is that you, the same year. This is all in the same year, 2016. And yeah, then, wow. then you've got uh, what else happened? Uh, Brexit. That was another one. And yeah. then uh, what else? And then more of on a local scale. Um, not many people would know about this unless you're 
follow soccer and you lived in the Northern Rivers, Bangalore winning the the Premier Premiership after a hundred years. And I think a fit yeah, well. four years they weren't even in Premier Division. And then Really? So it all just That's sort, huge. sort of and then oh yeah, and Leicester City as I, as I mentioned there, Pell, Leicester fucking City. You know they were a thousand to one to win when the That's started, right. Yeah, I remember Leicester that. City. That was that year. Yeah. So all that shit happened and you think, well fuck, twenty twenty is a crazy year, but yeah. I was just thinking 2016, that I would love to have another mm. year like that. Maybe the Broncos winning a grand final. That that would be considered a, one of those um, things that you'd never ever think would happen again. <laughs> nah, I mean, mate, like the Broncos, like you'd think after the last couple of weeks, you know, they'd be um, they'd be 100 to 1 to, to be there. But 23 to 1 now, actually. Points. Yeah, they'd, I yeah well, there you go. Night. Yeah, so 23 to but 1, at I think. At least... Yeah, they aimed up on Thursday night, though, mate, which was good for you. So, um, yeah. Oh. But it's funny with um, it's funny with grand finals, though, mate. You talk about you know the Roosters again or whatever. Like, yeah, same with the Sharks in sixteen. It was like the um, the Rabbitohs in fourteen. You know, yeah, you have you know I've done plenty of coaching like since I sort of finished playing, and it's funny, mate. You can't put your finger on it, but you get this feeling sort of halfway through the year that you're onto something special. Like, mm. just the team has a look and a feel about it. It's really hard to put your finger yeah. on it, but both them years, I remember sort of saying 14 and 16 when the Rabbitohs and then the Sharks won. Like, it just felt like it was their time, you know. So, um, it's too early to say that for this year, for the Eels. But, mate, you've got to stay healthy. You need a good mix of youth and experience, and which, which they have actually got. Um, and you'd think the Roosters would be due for um, – have a couple of injuries that might hurt them long yeah. term. But I don't wish ill on anyone. No, no, of course not. But um, with that being said, um, after that game – that grand final when I was down there. And see, the only downside about something like that mentioned, as I mentioned, happening is you get the bandwagoners and it's, um, and yeah. you get the, that you always get, it's like, I remember walking and this was thinking like, oh, fuck, kind of thing. So I was, I was walking out of the um, ANZ stadium and there's this South supporter and there's always that South supporter at all these games. You, you probably would have seen the Facebook page, like South, you know, the South fan at all the, the games where Souths aren't playing. And I've seen them at the Commonwealth Games. I've seen them at the UFC. I've seen it at the boxing. I've seen it at the... Even seen it at the cricket. There's always, And even at the WWE wrestling, you see the person with the fucking South. So it's like it's a worldwide thing. But um, yep. this bloke um, was wearing a South jersey and um, he was singing Up, Up, Cronulla. And <laughs> he's singing yeah, right, there you go. Up, Up, Cronulla. And it's like, well, yeah. what, didn't Rebels... Didn't you keep your receipt from 2014 when you bought <laughs> yeah. that from Rebel Sport? Did you did you cut the yeah. tag off? So you're still trying you to have. grasp onto frigging glory, and it's just they're out. The bandwagonist, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, mate, of course they're everywhere. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and I'm not just talking about in sport either. It's like nah, yeah, everyone. I, I think you and I, like last week, the, yeah, mate, ridiculous. I know. It's anyway, like, it's a, there's a good, there's a good purpose around it, but it's yeah, you see some videos of people don't even know why they're there. You know, that's like right. this is to throw away one liner. So that's right. And yeah, I think it's you've got to know what you stand for. You know, absolutely. And it's like mm. everyone stands for something. And 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 I, I, the only thing I'll say we're going too deep into it is that if you stand for something, stand for it 30, yep. 365 days a year, not just on a weekend. Yes, and correct. Just, and just you know, fight for it. And um, yeah. Otherwise, you will get found out, and you'll get mm. found out pretty quickly. So, but um, yeah. With that being said, so um, and not many of be a this is your life kind of thing. So, what got were you always a, a leaguey league league, or did any other yeah. sports come in? Like, was you you were just born into it, or yeah, mate, I was pretty much. Um, I started playing soccer as as most sort of guys that end up playing league, but they generally start playing soccer. And even um, my young fellow's eight, and he's only ever played football. But I think it's really yeah. good for um, guys who are interested in league long-term to start with soccer. It just gives you a really good uh, foundation of skills. But um, yeah. I played soccer for, and league for a couple of years, I think three or four years where I did both. The sort of the times on a Saturday married up where I could go straight from soccer over and play footy. But um, but yeah, then I, uh, mate, once I, I sort of was born and, and, and grew up in casino until I was about nine or 10. Mm-hmm. And then um, then I moved to the Bay and uh, when I was 10. And um, once I moved to Byron, it was straight footy, nothing else. And it was... Uh, footy in the winter, surf club and surfing in the in the summer. Yeah, that was sort of what we, um, yeah, what we grew up on. Yeah, good yeah. old days. It's unusual to see someone from Casino go and play for a team from Byron Bay. It's actually considered um, more so on a Lismore scale. It's like um, 
it's actually frowned upon in at least in soccer. Um, like we we had a few <laughs> yeah. we had a few um like to to use some examples and um I, I, not trying to piss anybody off from Lismore for saying it, but it's just um there's always just that rivalry and it's um you look at say well okay give you an in the soccer it's like. Even to go from play from Byron Bay to say one of the Lismore clubs like Richmond Rovers or um, Fistles or anything like that, you just don't see. It. And if you see it, it's well known. Yeah. And boy, don't yeah, yeah. And then and it goes the other way too. So like I saw when I was watching the Rams play, I saw a couple of Lismore heads. I'm thinking, oh geez. Um, and then you could probably iterate back um, what it was a couple of seasons ago when you were coaching Red Devils and you picked up a handful of. Um, Morris brothers boys and um and that first game um that oh first yeah game. um tell us about yeah, it. We, didn't, we didn't yeah sorry Nev yeah we didn't we didn't see that coming it was sort of um but I was excited to go back into a coach I'd just come out of coaching the Titans 20s for sort of four or five years and um wanted to go back and try to do a few things I could see the club sort of needed a, a bit of a new direction and yeah um yeah and funnily enough one thing led to another and we end up getting some really good fellas from Morris Brothers, guys like Daryl Butcher and yeah. Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Krause. Krause yep, yep. Krause, you know, the king, we call him. He's, um, yeah, much maligned and uh, certainly generally hated by other clubs. But when you actually work with him, he's such a – he's a great fella he's a, and he lights it up. And I can see why people don't – other teams don't like him because he's so good and he's, he's got a, that, that arrogance about him, you know. It, it but, must um, – Sorry, man. I must make mention to Krause. Um, he didn't go straight from Morris Brothers to the Red Devils straight away. He went. He played. Uh, he had a season playing rugby um, for Lismore, and yes. then went over to the Devils. And yeah. then, but then um, when he and I remember that game quite fondly. I was sitting there in the clubhouse watching it, and he scored a try. And then he just got targeted by his old teammates. Um, and it was just. Um, I'm thinking, holy shit! This is like. Mm. This is um. Uh, like and that, that's the first thing that came to my mind is this Byron Lismore rivalry like since the test of time. And, yeah, yeah, and it goes back to when I lost us that grand final in '96 when I was yeah. a kid. You know, um, I was sort of I just I was 16 playing A grade, sort of come in, and then the grand final I'd not long turned 17, and um, yeah, Morris Brothers had beaten us that year 24 nil on a catch up round on a, yeah, on yeah. a Tuesday night at, at Oaks Oval. Yeah, and then um, yeah, we end up uh, getting them in extra time there in '96. Um, eleven ten, but there was always that fierce rivalry between Morris Brothers and um, and the Red Devils, and yeah. um, it's continued on. So there, yeah, that that round you're alluding to a couple of years ago, yeah, we sort of went into it with a what we thought was a pretty red hot team, and uh, you know Daryl Butcher, who you know great fella, and um, lost a lot of weight in that preseason, really yeah. trimmed down, and yeah. brought a lot you know to the team, and obviously Krause, but. Yeah, just uh, mate, they just ambushed us that day, and to their credit, they were much too good, and that was sort of the start of. I think we we didn't win a game until round about round six. Yeah, yeah I can recall that, and then it was um. Mm. So and just to iterate, like on the soccer front, because I what going to watch um the Bowen Rams play in those grand finals against Richmond Rovers, and the and you could just see it, like and the last time they actually played was at Crozier Oval, so you got one stand full and. And the first two, the two before that, like in recent times, yep. you got one stand that's full of Rover supporters. You got one stand full of um, um, Byron Ram supporters, and then it's like you got about ten security guards down the center to make sure shit doesn't kick off. And um, yeah, wow. Well. And if and I remember Byron winning uh, the grand final was at two thousand and was it eighteen? And um, we they were like ten to one. You think about ten to one, they would no chance of winning because. I remember when they had the grand final qualifier a couple of weeks before that, um, Rams scored two goals in the space of five, six minutes. And then well, wow. it's just not a matter of how, what it is, but how much. And then, um, and then Byron just used that as um, motivation and just, um, they scored two goals early themselves and then they held on. And then they had, and I think also to iterate, they won the grand final against Bangalore, which was the big one before that. And then, but there was two grand finals before that one where they had, Two, not one, but two heartbreakers against the Rovers, and so that was ammunition to to you know, you know they won they won the grand final the year before against Bangalore, yep. which is Bangalore were looking to that was the first I think that was the first ever grand final that didn't feature a Lismore team in year like fifty odd years mm. or something ridiculous, but um but then they had that then they but then I sort of watched them last year um well I was there last year for the grand final and they played South Lismore and then. It, again, it had that, that Byron heated, Byron Lismore heated crowd at Crozier Oval. 
and then mm. it was it was more or less Byron. I just think uh, it, it was all, it's all a motivation thing because it wasn't the same Byron team that turned up twelve months before, and on top of that, they were playing a South Lismore team which weren't even in the Premier Division a couple of years before that. Um, they were. I remember when they played that when Byron played that grand final in, against Bangalore. They were playing in the first division grand final, and then they hadn't won a grand final since 1993. So yeah, wow. you, you just tell who's going to, when it comes to the big one, who's, who's wanting it. Well, I don't know. I can't comment about the soccer, but I know in the league, um, there was a real sort of um, silver tails thing about Byron. And, and, you know, the teams like from Lismore and Casino, we were very much hated because you'll remember better than most, mate. You know, we had the Blues Festival out at the footy field. Yeah. Um, back, this is going back into the mid, sort of mid to late 90s. And, I mean, the club used to generate around hundred thousand dollars in three or four days. You know, yeah. like got purely from um, basically renting the the field and the and the facility for that time, which was phenomenal. And and look, there was some, it's probably some, and it was I was only young, mate. I was sixteen, seventeen, playing first grade, just getting me two hundred bucks a win. But there was probably some older guys um, getting some more money, and, and good luck to them. But um, but I know that was always a good form of sledging on the field was. <laughs> more or less, how much are you getting and, and all that type of stuff. And we would always attract players, A, because it's Byron Bay, it's a beautiful place yeah. to live, but B, there was a bit of money to be had as well. Um, so whether that, whether that even made the, the rivalry worse, mate, it, it probably did. But, um, yeah, there's been some great clashes over the years. And to iterate too, probably on a, also on a music scale too, um, to give you a couple of examples, like um, you don't see, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's a strict thing because um, I was talking to Chad from Crisis Collapse. They consider themselves a Byron band. They've played many, they've actually played their first gig in Lismore. Um, but you yep. get like, those real, like, strict Byron, like, well, even when Parkway Drive before they got big, they never played Lismore. Mm. Um, yeah. A few other, like, In Hearts Wake, I think, oh, I don't know if they played Lismore or not. Um, those ones mm. that are not just, you know, they have like four guys from Byron and one from Bowen or Lismore. Um, that I'm talking about everyone that's been based in the Byron Shire, and and then yeah. um, and then you, and I'll give you another example. Um, when Sepultura, um, the mighty Sepultura, came out and played, yeah. they played Byron at the Great Northern two years ago, and um, everyone I, I knew everyone from my people as far as Cost Harbour that came up for it three hours down the, tr- the road, and they came up to the Byron show, and I didn't notice anybody based in Lismore that were there. Like I got. <laughs> bunch yeah. of friends in Lismore and I'm thinking, well, where were you? I said, oh, we're going to the one in Brisbane. I said, well, right. I'm thinking because they, they just don't want to mingle in the bar and nightlife or something. They, and the one in Brisbane, I must iterate, was at Eaton's Hills, which is like, well, you can class it as a sun shop south, south side of sunny coast. And I'm thinking you go yeah. all the way to Lismore for like three and a half hours and they won't come to the one at the Northern. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's funny though. And then they got some Lismore ice that are sort of, you run into them, they claim to be from Byron, you know, the hills, the hills of Byron. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's a story yeah. for another day. I but um, yeah. I knew that out of, well, you're funny you say that. I was out at Nimbin last week. So, um, and they, they, yeah, they, that bandwagon gets um, jumped on pretty quickly out there too. So, um, yeah, yeah. Speaking, so speaking a bit about, um, well, grand finals and whatnot, and, um, and, and this is an idea that I, well, it's, I can't say it's my idea, but uh, it, some of the for the maybe the next next time we're we're on a potty together is um as a thing called um I, I listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts and um there's this idea where they have a watch along so they basically they they watch an old pay per view or something on WWE Network and then and now we'll talk about it and and the, normally the person that's talking about it's had some kind of dealing with it and I was thinking that grand final that we we call back in 2018 uh, with the Tweed Coast Raiders and Ballard and we're talking about who, who wanted it on the day. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. that's an idea for you and me, brother, like to relive that. And there's actually mm. people, there's actually people from the Tweed Coast wanting to not just see the replay again, but also to, I guess, you know, have a perspective from who are the ones they're calling it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's mate, that's cool. And that just takes me back, you know, that day. I mean, I spoke earlier about teams that have a, a look and a feel about them. They're going to, that's their year. I mean, the Raiders, admittedly, they, they lost that major semi yeah. to Ballina at home yeah. that day. But all year, it looked like that it was going to be their year. There was things that happened for them that year. They had very few injuries. And then you and I both remember, mate, on grand final day, that the Phil the Hill shirts and the, the amount of crowd support they had and just the bounce of the ball, you know. I mean, I think their first try was 
Tane Robinson put a kick in that yeah, looked like it was going to end right. up end up at Suffolk Park. Yeah, and it just had a beautiful bounce, and and I think uh, one of the the centres scored, and I thought, geez, it's going to be their day. And who would have thought, you know, from being pretty lacklustre in that major semi to then coming out and just putting that perfect game together on on the big day. So mate, that'd be cool. Things yeah, like that'd well, be, uh, it'd be so, cool. To do. We've got so time. You, so yeah, yeah. Well, when you've got a couple of hours free, we'll we'll, we'll run over it because it's um. And speaking a little bit, like not going too much into it now because we'll save it for when we do that, that, um, that, you know, do that watch along is, um, it's just, I've done, I've been to all those grand finals in Ballon when they started basically hosting them since 2013. And I've been there as a commentator and I've been there as just a fan, just a neutral. And I was there when you were in the coaching stuff when Byron played and I was one, I was one of those guys. I was one of those guys. Yeah so to speak, in the Byron version of the Field the Hill mm. guys. And I was there wearing a Parkway Drive singlet. So I was in my Byron gear. So I've been on it yeah. on both sides of it and I can get the feel of it. And and I can only imagine more how testy would have been between because between the Ballina supporters and the, in this case, the Tweed supporters. It was just, you could just mm. feel that energy and that brings yeah. on grand final day. And um, I remember the year before when, well, the year before the one we did, when Kujin played, um, there was that, and then there was the. They had to stop the game about twenty minutes in, could, um, so the police could walk from one end of the ground to the other, and they had to like mm. pull one of got one of the. Um, I think I don't know. Someone chucked a beer can or something like that onto the onto the ground or something. And it was just the raw was that energy. The Kujin, yeah, it was, was that the, the game at Kujin Nev? Kujin and no, 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 no. It was, was in the one. Was it the Ballina one? Sorry, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I didn't that, go to that one. Yeah. And I remember that's the idea that that was the fucking idea that thing. I'm just standing there with all that because I was the Morris brothers, I think, were playing reserve grade. That's when they I think they won another title. That's when they went on that big run. It was about the start of it. And I was there standing with the Morris brothers supporters and then just having a few beers and I'm and I'm standing, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, fuck, how good would this be? It'll be live stream. That was my mm. idea then and there. And I'm thinking, this is so yeah. this is like I mean I've been to State of Origins, I've been to Grand Finals, and I'm just thinking this is right up there with the intensity, and people need to see this. And mm. um, I was thinking, and so that's when I had the idea, and it took a bit of took a bit of time for it to happen. It took about it. Well, I mean, it was it only just passed the line about three weeks before the first final series. So, um, yeah. but um, it's it's just that that right there was the idea for us to you and I to. I didn't mm. think you and I would be up there, up the stairs, calling the next one and the one after that. But, yeah. Um, but it's, it's a great it's concept, funny, how the world, funny how this world works. Oh, and you did a great job, man. I mean, to get that up and running. And then as, as you'll attest to, I mean, the, 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 the much, uh, the way that it grew from that first year when we did the semis and the grand final to the next year, I mean, both you and I were getting text messages from players saying, have we got the game today? You know, yeah. like who, who, yeah. who are you filming? Who yeah. who's a live stream match? And of yeah. course, we couldn't say anything. But um, yeah. it just goes to show, like the players actually wanted it. Um, Absolutely, there's a lot of, I mean, the numbers uh, of the viewing, you know, from from first year to second year to third year was it was all on the upward trajectory. The so, roof, yeah. yeah, and it's obviously um, just a good profile and good way for for businesses to promote their business too to a different sort of audience. So, um, albeit mate, coming off a very low base, but I think um, it's the way you know, the way of the future. So, um, mate, while ever there, there's opportunities to do it, then I know that you and I love doing it. So Absolutely. we'll keep putting our hand up. Absolutely. Mm. And I think the only downside about that grand final, and something I didn't really talk about until I guess now, uh, on that grand final day, the only thing that was a downer is that how you were, and, it, and there's always going to be pests and trolls and you know, fucking dickheads. Um, and it's like when I got home from that grand final, I was thinking, shit, I was still buzzing. Like it was just, mm just that energy and I've come home and I really, and then there's just been this big thread, just like they claim to be tweet supporters. I don't buy that for a second because mm. um, if you are a tweet supporter, let's put it this way. If you're a tweet co supporter, you're there at that ground in a green shirt. Correct. Uh, especially yeah. it was in the first grand final. And then, uh, and it, well, let's put it this way by the sounds of it. If they were, um, supporting, they were probably, um, you know, they were probably granted by mummy and daddy and they had to go sit in the basement and, or if they were at the ground then, and they're there texting us worried about how we're calling a game of football. That's just um, mm. like, it, it sort of just took a damper. I mean, I, I mean, we're, we're in the business where, you know, where, where we're, we're going to be, we're going to cop it. 
from people and, you know, constructive criticism, you take it as it is. But the the amount, like, for one, they thought that you had an eye on the Ballina job, even though yeah. they thought I, and they thought you were, and I was going to be your, your assistant, even though I was uh, yelling every time Tweeko scored a bloody try. So figure that one out. Yeah. Oh, man, it was ridiculous because I knew um, like Jamie Lyon was going to come in and be the captain coach the next year. Was a even, mate then, of mine. even at then, at that so, point. Yeah, so like at that point there was a yeah. So those sort of accusations or insinuations were ridiculous. But um, even things like I think, mate, we didn't even have the cans at that point, did we? No. we didn't have the headphones. We're just doing our best. Yeah. And, so and we'll that's go, all good, mate. It, and we'll go yeah. into that when we do this watch along because um, I was actually I actually just watched the game a couple of weeks ago and it was um, and I just remembered how loud it was. Yes, we didn't have any of these, and so well, I was, nah. I was literally having to yell just just so you could hear me and vice versa yes. on top of yeah. the intensity on top of everything else. And then mm. these Muppets on the other line saying that, Oh, you know, this person's got a microphone shoved down his throat. And it's like, well, I can, like, I, I can guarantee you that, um, um, I think I've, I think one of those people I think I knew was there and I just thought, well, hello, I'm up here if you want to come and have a chat, but they never do. They just like to hide nah, nah. the keyboard. And, yeah. um, and I don't know they wouldn't, wouldn't, weren't legit Tweed Coast supporters. As I said, we're talking about the whole bandwagoners thing. And, um, that's right. And like a real Tweed Coast supporter, knowing if that's your first grand final, you're there on that hill, unless you're, you're a little brat and then you go sit, sit on the mummy daddy's basement because you're not allowed out. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my take on it. That will, yeah, that's right. That's I the think only way. You're spot on. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, don't let those people, uh, the keyboard warriors who aren't not. old enough to drive, get to your mate. Well, yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah. as I said, I'm I'm happy to cop it. It's just the only thing that kind of got under my grill is that my mom had to sit there in the, in the lounge room reading all that as the game because mm. you know that much feel it was for that a you know a baby boy is going to call this um big game of footy and then um yeah. having to read it and then she was a bit upset by that and that's sort of the um where it got with me and then um the only other thing that i kind of take to task is being labeled a bias um yeah yeah and i i I actually had a couple of those um a couple of that come up last year and like i i don't respond unless um but then again if someone's gonna label me a bias i like to like call it out so for example Mm. when we were down at um we did that game down in um, Foster Tongue Curry and Penrith Panthers were playing Northern Rivers Titans. And um, and we'll call them that. And then I get there and I'm seeing everyone, all those Penrith Panthers supporters saying, oh, you didn't call this player's name. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And you, you called this number wrong. And I said, well, where we were situated was we we're on the 30 metre we We're on the 30 metre lot on the right side of the field. And so Penrith are running this way. So you can't see their numbers. So I'm not prepared to call a, a player's mm. number without knowing. Yeah. So that was sort of the reason. And then um then it was grand final day up at the Gold Coast when your your local I so I can say your like the Corumban Eagles yeah. in the twenties. And then um yeah. apparently I had it I had it in um I, I had stakes at the Burley Bears or something because they mm-hmm. were called so each time I but each time I I said, Okay, well um you've labeled me a bias, you say I've got an agenda, give us mm. your case. And each time they said no, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, it's just, they're all cowards. Mm. They're cowards. It's tricky, mate. Yeah, it's hard, especially when you're, I mean, you know, you and I are both from, from the Bay and I, I tried to avoid calling Byron games where possible. I, yeah. I know like, you were scheduling it and putting other guys on, which is good. And yeah, yeah. and I did call some games and totally unbiased, but um, uh, it's tricky. And even in those games that you're talking about where you're commentating teams that you may have never seen before, yeah. you don't know their faces, you can't see their numbers. Then if the opposing team, you do know a couple of people, or you can see their numbers, you genuinely sound a bit biased because you, you actually them. can call, call them with some yeah. conviction. But that's not, that's not bias. That's no, just that's being just, able to call what, what you know. Yeah, and, that's, so. and that's right. It's like because the Northern yeah. Rivers, like by that point, we would recall all their games for the, um, yep. the John's Daily Cup. And so they... Mm. they uh, so you know them. Yeah, so we know them. And, and yeah, it's like we don't right. get any of the, to do any of the Southern teams. And that's not bias. It's just you got to maintain yeah. your knowledge. But with that being said, I learn about all these players during the week as well. So yeah. and you could hear that. I, I put all my effort in that. Like I, I'm not, I don't know them if they stood in front of me, but I will learn about mm. them as much as I can. 
and yeah. um, it's and it's like the crumb and eagles. I'd never even. Uh, mm. um, actually, sorry, I, I must iterate. Right. It was actually the other way around. It was actually Burley Best, <laughs> and they actually won the game. It was actually I was in it for the Corumbin Eagles, so it was the other way around. I apologise, but to any um, any um, Corumbin Eagles fans, it was actually the other way around. The thing is, I never even caught a Corumbin Eagles game before. I'd done mm. the Burley Bears, that one with you. That was the only time I even done Burley, and then Corumbin. Yeah, that was a. I mean, I only knew one other player, one player from Cooch and Brock Styles, but then. Other than that, I'd never even, I don't even never set the yeah. ground. I don't, I, I think I've been to Columbia nah. maybe once or twice. Any visit I do up the Gold Coast, it's just, and then they want mate, to. You're play missing out, life. Nev. You got, mate, you got to get up here to the well, Mighty mate, Eagles. That's well, where, that's where my young bloke plays in the Mighty yeah. Under Nines. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully they can get some footy again soon. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to working that competition. It's a good competition, the Rugby League Gold Coast competition, yeah. too. It's, um, it is. And, and, you know, Burley, as I was saying, they, I think I said to Shory, they feed you well up there too, as you and I know, when we did that game up at um, Fizzy Park. Correct. Yeah, the Burley Bears, they're professional. They turn it on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so to iterate now, so obviously you base yourself on the Gold Coast now and you've had some time in Byron. So do you still keep up with the affair? Like, just to get away from the footy kind of talk, um, and I was discussing this a little bit about with Shory, just the, um, obviously you've, you've grown up in Byron, you've seen it, um, evolve and stuff so um do you still keep in in touch with how byron do business and um mm. whatnot yeah mate i do i've obviously still got some good friends down there and i was actually um coming out of the surf this morning and i was talking to gary timpley and okay. he know timpo he started bay action with his brother mark and um owns a fair bit of property and stuff down there he's a, he's a local legend timpo and I said to him, mate, have you been down the bay? And he said, yeah, I was down there on Wednesday and um, checking a few things out. I asked him how our businesses were going. He said, oh, unfortunately, you know, there's a few police signs popping up in town now, which yeah. is happening everywhere, of course. But, um, yeah, and obviously my old mate Birdie, at, uh, well, the old Mad Dog, we're now the rec surf yep. store in, in town, crossing the beach hotel. So a couple of mates there. I've got a good mate who's a builder down there, uh, Benny Quinlan. And, yeah, um, yeah mate, I, 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 like oh, you, Benny. I still know heaps of people. Old BQ, mate. He's mad <laughs> as a cut snake. BQ. Well, yeah, he um, yeah, I go to his office at All Press Coffee all the time, and then he's, he's just yeah, that's sitting there in the corner, yeah. So, um, yeah. and uh, but it's just um, yeah, and I was discussing this in length with um Shory just um a fortnight ago, and it's just seeing how much of this town's really just evolved. Um, and mm. it's just you can't like you used to be able to walk down the main street of Byron, and then someone even if you didn't know them, they knew who you were, and then they'd say good day. Yeah. And now it's like. You could do laps of Johnson Street, Marvel Street um, on a Saturday, busy Saturday night. And you're not going to know anybody. And, and it's just... Um, That's right. And it's, I've, I've even seen it from like um, growing up in a little town called Newry Bar. If you don't know where that is, if you're listening, it's mm. about ooh, 10 minutes south of Bangalore. And um, and I was part of that where all the families, like we, you know, you, your typical family having you know, your mother, father, and you had about four kids. And... and um, we, I was part of that um, where all these families moved in about the late 80s, 89 and um, 89, 88 and that, that period. And we all went and all my mates, moved, a lot of them I'm going to be catching up with tonight, actually. Um, yeah, we're all the same age and we grew up in kindergarten and we had 120 students, which is actually pretty big for, for Nuri Bar. Yeah. yeah. A school which only has 20, 30 people now. And, um, then when we sort of gra- when we all graduated, I think you know there was another that went on for a little bit longer. Then although they've all left, and now that's sort of happening in the Byron world. Like all mm. anyone that's grown up here has left, and probably from no fault of their own, probably because of pricing, housing pricing. But I think also it's not the same Byron anymore. And I just think um, um, my gripe with the current council is that they still want to keep Byron at least on the surface as Byron. But the infrastructure, like, and they want to bring in the tourism, which is great. And I was saying mm. to this in length for sure, it's that you can't just um, have this much tourism and then have that much infrastructure. No, it does doesn't not make work. Sense. That's why the Gold no. Coast, you go to the likes of well, Corumban and Coolangatta mm. and Palm Beach and stuff. And I, I'm not fighting tooth for now to get a car park. Um, there's minimal traffic. Mm. Um, I mean, especially at the moment when they're still um, unable to get up, people still aren't able to get up there. But it's um, 
it's just the same. We have one road into the main center of town and they just want to jam it in. And you try and tell me anywhere that any other place, in a, not just Australia, but in the world, where locals who pay their way um, have to pay to park in their own town. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's madness, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I don't know. You correct me if I'm wrong there, but there, to me, there's still a, a, a pretty good underbelly of, of old school locals, particularly down sort of Suffolk way uh, and maybe even Sunrise yeah. sort of way where, where you well, are. But um, it's but they, out, you though. don't really see them. Yeah, you, it, mate, 100%. I remember a couple of years ago, I had a coffee with um, Tony Farrell, who's my, my dad's uh, ex-business partner. He's still got LJ Hooker in town there. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was talking to him. And, oh, actually, well, Tony was in our 96 grand final team when I was, when I was a kid. So we sort of go back a long way. And I, I said to him... Um, Mate, you know, how many people around town do you still know these days? You know, obviously there's heaps of Sydney and Melbourne ice moved up. And he said to me, Crossy, five years ago, I used to drop the kids at the public school and uh, in town. And I would know 80, 90% of the parents without a problem, you know. Yep. And being <laughs> in real estate, you know, that's that's important that, that you know yep. people. Yeah. He said, now I drop them off. And he said, I wouldn't know 30 or 40% of them like in the yep. Phoenix mistakes, you know. And someone like Tony, who's been around town a long time, um, yeah, it sort of just puts it in perspective, you know, that um, yeah, a lot of people sort of come, they do business from home or they sort of fly in, fly out for the week and they, they call Byron home and, and good luck to them. But um, certainly not the Byron Bay I grew up in. And it's and I guess you can sort of look at it like, well, when we're like, and we, and we look at this on a football scale, and, and this is probably something you know firsthand coaching when you had another stint coaching is um, uh, when I when I played, well, I actually played for the Devils when I was a, at 96, 97 as a junior. And we'd have all the boys from Nuriba, Bangalore, Sinfin Bars, Byron. Um, there was probably more actually Nuriba kids, actually half Nuriba, half Sinfin Bars, handful from Byron Public. And then you look at uh, today, it's, uh, and that's, I'm talking from a junior scale. And then that sort of evolved into the seniors, even to, up to about, well, that 2014 team, because mm. um, all the boys that have grown up there. And then it's sort of like, well, you get, a handful from Lismore, a handful from Tweed, a handful from Lower Clarence, a handful from the Gold Coast. And uh, and it's just, it's it's that Byron camaraderie just like, they, they'll always fill up Donnie's Hill. They'll always fill yeah. that. Um, that's sort of that, that the, the, the law supporters, they will stay there thick and thin. But it's, um, it's just that, that, like that, it's like, it's just why Ballon is so successful every year. It's because, they have not only the, all the kids that are there are, pl- are mates with each other, their fathers yeah. were mates with each other. And that's yes, sort of, and that sort of evolves like, um, yes, yeah, generational, yeah. generational. And that, and you, and that's why like, it's, that's the sort of knowing how, how growing up in Yuri bar, mm-hmm. you have this camaraderie. It's like, I've got a handful of friends that I made through high school, but I've still got all the same crew from, from Yuri bar. And it's like, mm. it's, and then you, you look at, Tweed Coast and like that, like that. It's um a lot of those boys they either played each other, play as juniors at Tweed Coast, if not Belamble, and then came over to Tweed mm-hmm. Coast. It's like I remember yeah. researching their team last year, and I thought there was about, and I actually said this in a game. It's like 12, 13 of their players actually played from Belamble, and I was actually, and we haven't seen it yet, probably in the next month or so when the competition starts back up. Is um how many of those boys went back to Belamble now that the NRLs? there in the NRRL. It's probably a good question for Mickey, actually, and get him on there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Mickey would know for sure. Yeah, so it's like, um, do they all st- stay loyal to the Tweed cause or do they come back to Blamble? Um, but it's, mm. um, but for me, it's just bit, speaking more about the Byron thing and, um, and Shorey, <laughs> I think he was just joking when saying I had some investment issues. The, 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 the Dan <laughs> do not talk about topic of West Byron. And yeah. I just feel that, um, I'm not saying I'm for it as such, um, the principle of it. I'm saying I need, I'm, I feel it's got to the point where this council has for years have just crammed, crammed, crammed in the mm. tourists. It's now forced the hand to them to do something, have to do something. Yeah. Like that. So that's where I was mm. sort of getting at the other week is that they need to turn in. Um, I wouldn't say build a bunch of houses and just leave it at that. That's going to not fix anything, but I need another estate where you can have a, another, uh, I don't think you can have a pub. I don't think they're going to allow another liquor license in the town, but another, another shopping center, another doctor surgery, another, um, you know, plague area and all that. And just that, that's the infrastructure. And, and I think Byron mm. for it to survive in the next 10, 20 years, 
they're going to need to have a couple, as much as it might not look on the surface on this not very Byron Bayish, they're going to need to pop up the high rises. Then they're going to need to um, build the extra roads and stuff. I know they're building a bypass at the moment, but um, mm. they need that kind of stuff. And the, the locals who, because that's the other thing, the, the locals are getting forced out of town because they made the pay in their own town. And, mm. um, and they got to like, uh, like introduce a bed tax in for the, for the hotel industry. Like, so at which, you know, that doesn't require maintenance pay parking doesn't do anything. And so I feel that introduce that bed tax. It's hidden. It's, it, there's no maintenance required with the pay parking. You're going to maintain the machines. You're going to make sure follow up. The people are going to pay it. And, um, and it's just extra, you know, cars on the road to make sure that everyone's mm. away. So that's why I feel you introduce the extra few dollars, pay the, in the bed tax, and then people are, you know, contributing to the town to make it evolve even further. Yeah, mate. I, I think the big one, as you hit the nail on the head, was the road. You know, I mean, yep. for it to take 45, 50 minutes to get from Ewingsdale into town in, in those peak times, I mean, I've got some friends that still live, live out at Ewingsdale, some old sort of generational friends. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's what it is, mate. 45 to 50 minutes yeah, to get into town to go and do some banking or I know banking's changed and it's online and stuff, but yeah. there's still some of our older generation who are still banking checks and stuff with, with things yeah. they do. So um, that's another issue again, but um, yeah, I mean, you, it's all good water for West Byron, but you know, they need roads in and out. Like even, mate, even South side of town, you know, I, I noticed in the time when I last coached Byron in 2008 or nine, yeah. and then I went back there five, six years later, the amount of traffic during school, like drop-off time at school, mm. coming from Suffolk Park into town, like that is all, uh, you know, I'm preaching the converted, but that's all backed back now. That never used to be the case. You know, I grew yeah. up beachside Suffolk and then, then um, at Baywood Chase when it was developed. Yeah. Mate, that never existed, that traffic. And that's now right. it's unbelievable. So that's, that's, that's right. both ways, you know. Mm. That, that's that's right. It's like, it, 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 it's almost to the point where it's like, they, the powers to be, get off on seeing people being busy. I think it's just, mm. it's it's an ego. I think it just tickles an ego, so to speak, to say that, oh shit, this you know, this gridlock. That means it's busy. You know, it, it, that's yeah. great. It's a false. It's it's mm. false. It's completely false. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah, forcing forcing the locals out of town. But at the end of the day, it's that's how I feel. It's all changed, and it's been a bit. That's it started started wreaking its head back in 2006, seven, that time. And then it sort of mm. just went from there. It's like, you. it's even now, I, was, I said this, this to um, a couple of weeks ago as well, that um, you got all these, um, you know, I'm talking more on a music scale. You, you got, they, they have a cap on how many um, international or well, big international music acts that you can have. Like Elton John wasn't even allowed to play because we, because of Blues Fest, because of Splendor. Yeah. Because of, well, I don't think Falls Festival was around then, but um, it's like, then using, using um, you know, the big guns in Parkway Drive at the moment. It's like, they can't, mm. like, they because they've completely changed their stage setup where you know, they're shooting fire off the stage and then then they're, it's it's more of an outdoor, like, Metallica ramp slash ramp style kind of setup and because they've had to evolve and, and if you mm. you watch the documentary and you see how much money they, they, they didn't make a cent. Uh, apparently they didn't make a cent off their last European tour because all the money that they made went into that stage show. And I'm thinking, well, Byron being from Byron and they haven't played in Byron for about five years. And I don't think it's going to mm. happen anytime soon. Speaking of which I was actually supposed to see them tonight up in Brisbane. Um, oh, so right. yeah, with hate bread and every time at all, I was actually yeah. pre COVID with one for COVID. I'd probably be in the car now heading, Heading up to the yep. river stage in Brisbane. So funny I mentioned that. That was on the plane. Not to be, that. mate. July yeah, 1st. Not to be. July 1st, 2021 is when it's been rescheduled for on a Thursday night, which, you know, I'll have to. Mate, is there any news on um, Metallica rescheduling? Because oh, we, yeah. we both missed that one. Yeah, as well. that's that's the other thing. I was at. It's, yeah. it's funny how that all worked because, um, and I say this about, <laughs> I say mm. this to Stephanie. Um, all the time that um well i don't think it's going to happen probably what well, i think before pre-covid we were looking at 2021 might still happen yep. and um but you reckon that you reckon they'll come back oh, I, um i like to be optimistic but yeah got, it might be 2022 now the way it's gone you think you know you write a year off to, to make it happen but it's it's yep. where the world works um and <laughs> 
um, because obviously I was supposed to go to Sydney and the show in Britain yeah. on the weekend of the Sydney yeah. show. So obviously I didn't fly to Sydney. So I, um, I gave Jetstar another $150 donation. Um, and then, um, uh, I mean, in the hotels, you know, I, yeah, I, I always book, make sure when you book hotels, you always have the option to cancel. So I, I didn't lose money on that. So I ended up staying up um, on the Gold Coast and me, me and the partner, we went to um, play a bit of putt-putt. Uh, we were aiming to at, at the Parkwood Tavern where the Titans train. And yeah. uh, so you probably know that set up down there. And, um, yeah. and um, we were about to walk to the first hole and then they were just doing renos like paving and um, there was a gap and poor Steph, she didn't see, she didn't see the, the gap and she <laughs> fell down. I thought she broke her freaking ankle and grazed up pretty well, but she, you know, done the ligaments in her wrist. And then I thought, James Hetfield, this is on you, brother. <laughs> because <laughs> if James Hetfield yeah. hadn't, uh, you know, obviously haven't, I mean, obviously, you know, all joking aside, exactly. he's doing some yeah, yeah, yeah. issues. But, but yeah. if I would have been in Sydney, we wouldn't have been out there playing putt like she wouldn't have done the wrist. But, um, Do you uh, reckon James would have come to the party on a little bit of money for <laughs> Steph? <laughs> uh, but as I said, all joking aside, I'm, I'm glad he's doing so much better now. Um, yeah, of course. Have you seen, have I you seen the, come back. Have you seen the latest um, effort that they did with Blackened? Um, did the acoustic when they did the recording? Mate, I think it? I did see that. Was that on Insta? Maybe yeah, I saw a did. snippet of it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was more or less they were playing um, just, you know, in ISO doing years. I thought that was something quite yeah. freaking amazing about how they yeah. pieced that all together, man. And um, So good. I'm just, and I was just saying to um, Chatty um, in the last podcast I did, um, I he was supporting a band called Atreyu, which is um, one of those, and that was like end of February in Brisbane. That, and I keep a list of all the gigs I, I've been to, and that was 999 shows I've been to. And so I'm still waiting. I thought I should have done my thousandth yeah. gig either last year or the year before, and it looks yeah. like it's going to be next year when uh, that transpires again. So, um, Gee, that's a few, Dan Ned, Coates, you've put away a few under yeah, the belt. Dan, yeah, I was at Parkway Drive's first ever show too. So that was my first, yeah. my first show was Parkway Drive's first show. And then, I remember you showing me that, yeah. And you, and you look at and you look at the old. Um, it's like when you when you talk about rugby league fans, they keep um, copies of the the rugby league week and the the big you know the, the old um, footy yeah you know, no the magazines magazines and, yeah, yeah yeah and so um, a lot of us guys we we like to keep um, I don't I probably self confess I probably haven't got as much as I many of them as I like as other people but they keep the old ticket stubs and they keep their old like flyers yeah. and and just when I see that Parkway Drive um, <laughs> um, um, you know leaflet six dollars I remember paying paying in twenty cent six ten bucks. cent yeah twenty cent ten yeah. cent pieces and I was just thinking um, who would have thought that these would be the same band that would play in front of hundred thousand people at the Viking Festival in Germany. But just, but just to iterate, as I was saying, it's like uh, just to have their their I was their setup would be fit for something like Red Devil Park, but they they probably wouldn't be able now to get mm. the approval to play there because of Splendor and all that. So all these overseas yeah. artists, so they should be it's nurturing hard. the local talent. And like because I'm sure that would kill. I mean, I've spoken to a couple of the guys, yeah. and that would kill to play somewhere like in their hometown again. It would just yeah yeah. It's so hard now. It's so hard with council, mate. You know, I know when I tried to do a couple of things out at Red Devil Park a few years ago, it's it's hard because, you know, you're in a sort of a residential area now. Everything's so built up around it, uh, you know, um, which wasn't as much the case back in sort of the early mid-90s when, when Barnsley, you know, Jeff Barnes was organising stuff at Byron. Uh, what a job yeah. he did, mate, for the club. Yeah, um, unbelievable. So, but, um, mate, that reminds me. Did you did you go to home bake in 96? Remember that no, at Blondie was... Fields? Mate, I think yeah, I'm probably too mate, young. I, yeah, mate, I think um, what was I listening to then? I think Pant. I I started listening to Metal then, but obviously I was listening to what I was on Rage in the top forty. I think I was listening to yeah. What was I? What was big in '96? Um, I think that was when um, I was probably, well, Silverchair were young. Yeah, yeah, like they they played there because it was it was home. It was all it was all Australian artists. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. It was the old no. mud bake you might hear about. It yeah. was when it was super muddy. And, and what about what about yeah. warped, what about Warp Tour? And um, that was the other one, ninety eight Warp Tour as well. Um, that was a Red Devil Park. Yeah. yeah, so that was pretty good. I'm be, I, I always talk to every time I bump into the guys from Parkway. I'm thinking, ah, Red Devil Park is waiting there to put yeah. on this shit. And, and it's like I even joked with um, Jeff on when I interviewed him once. I said, um, 
Um, you guys could support Metallica. You can bring him out to Red Devil Park, and he, and mm. we're still waiting on a petition to get that happen. But um, yeah, it's like it's just it's all changed. Like the whole landscape of it is changed. Um, by and by as a whole, and it's like even when you go out to a, a local coffee shop now, and I'm I'm not going to mention names or businesses there, but it's just sort of the vibe. Is I think, but it's the only ta- only place where you can go get a coffee or have breakfast where. Um, I don't know if, if it's paying the baristas or the, the waiters not enough and it kind of cuts their responsibilities. But there's at least two places where you go and order a coffee. And this, this is sit-down, by the way, where you got to go yeah. and pick up your own coffee. And, yeah, um, wow. and I'll, I'll give, you, give you a couple of examples. Just so get, and I'm, me, me, and, um, me and the partner we were up at um, Brunswick Heads last week having, having um um, for one of our first sit down coffees and meals, I think it was on the Monday long weekend. And, um, the bloke brings, it brings a coffee over and it was just spilt a little bit. I didn't even think nothing. He goes, Oh, I'm so sorry. I spilt that. Um, do you want me to make you a freshie? And I'm like, nah, mate, it's, you know, just you know, no big deal. Um, but then there was, um, one place in Byron where it was on the, it was an October ish long weekend. And, um, they they built so he's making the coffee and I'm there waiting for it waiting for it and there it is sitting up there so we weren't even told so I, I'm going, yeah. I thought okay I have to go pick it up and I'm I'm a clumsy fucker so um self confess <laughs> so I'll go over there to yeah. get it and I've spilt half of it and I spilled half and I was wearing fong so it's an old H and S thing and I'm spilled yeah. it there and I'm just thinking fuck he's overfilled it and this yeah like this the the guy who's made it just looked at me like I'm a, like I'm this dumbass I'm like well motherfucker it's yeah, mate. The world's the world's going mad, mate. Yeah, to get a takeaway coffee, or if you get one in a, a cup, please just bring it to me. You would. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, yeah. that's, it's what you paid to bloody do. So, but I I'm mean, either sitting down or I'm taking it away. That's it. And um, yeah, so it's it's not like. But with that being said, it's like, have you ever been? You probably never had this issue, but have you have you ever felt? Um, well, I mean, Nathan's not a hard name to fuck up when you're riding on a coffee cup, but um. Have you ever had to like try and when you, well, not even just coffee. Have you ever had to try and make it so you had to give a middle name or something because to write down something on, because you're worried about how they're going to mispronounce it or, but as I said, I don't uh, think you would have had that problem, but. So what, Dwayne, so what are they called? Wayne or what, Dwayne, what are they, how well, do they stuff it up? Starbucks is um, a couple of, couple of stories. So uh, and there's two, so the First time, first or second time I ever went to Melbourne, which was about 2009-10, um, I went to just order just an ice mocha or something. I think it was um, on Swanson Street in Melbourne. And um, I gave him my name. And then I've looked at the cup and um, it's written Twain as in Shania Twain, T-W-A-I-N. Like to the, yeah. to, to, you know, to the T-W-A-I-N. And it's an... And think, Twain-o. Tw- Twain-o, yeah, Twain-o. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not, don't ask me to try and sing any Shania Twain, but um, nah. <laughs> it's just not happening. But then, then at Starbucks again, it was a one Christmas or so doing some Christmas shopping at Rabina Town Centre, and then um, I've gone to um, order again, and this time they've written Twain, P W I N E, Twain, P Twain, Twain. I mean, who the fuck's right. that Twain? Um, but I don't know or have heard of a plane. No. So, so my middle name's now Andrew. So I've now had to change. Um, every time I now go order a coffee, it's especially it's Starbucks. Yep, yeah, Andrew. And so then I've done it. And here's another story. So I've actually went and done that. So at Rabina, and I remember that I was there with one of my mates, um, but one of my besties who um follows the Raiders. So I was there. It was the first. I was there for a Titans Raiders game. So I've ordered this coffee and um, and then I see um, Chrissy, K- Kale and Bryce who come up the escalator. I'm going down the food court. You know where so I go The boys. He's come up and I've had, had the coffee cup in my hand. And he's saying, said, mate, yeah. what are you doing trying to imitate semi? Yeah, you know, semi Andrew, <laughs> Andrew. And it's like, what? yeah, it's like, because that was. What like, is this? Yeah. So what the fuck are you? You're not Andrew. Are you getting his coffee? Are you bringing it down to him? And I was like, no. And I've explained it. I said, man, I've got to give yeah. him my middle name because I'm getting, you know, sick and tired of all the. Um, people mispronounce. I mean, I've had it since I was about six years old when they marked the role at school, and then that's when it was a hard one. When when you're at school, when you're like a little, you know, six, seven, eight, when the teacher marks the role, it wasn't so much in primary school. It's like when they had substitute teachers, but when you have a swagger teachers that you only see once a week, and you're what thirteen and stuff, and then everyone's getting your name mixed up, and then kids hear it, and then 
that gives them something to run with. And then they yeah, yeah, Twino, June, Juan, but I'm like, fuck sakes. It's like, well, I'm not the one that fucked it up. So, <laughs> uh, Nev, just stick Nev. with Nev. Well, Nev and That's Twino, it. it's in big white writing go. in the intro. Yeah. There so, so, um, so with the, um, obviously with Q Cup, um, on the shelf for the year, are you, are you, are you go, are you still looking after training wise? You still keeping in touch with the fellas, the East Tigers? Mate, it's been a tricky one because I, unlike the NRL, which was, you know, the season was put on hold um, to wait and see. With the Q Cup, mate, they, they just cancelled the season after yeah. round one. Yeah, that's right. So it was like, mate, we, our boys had the hardest preseason. You know, just a, a quick backstory, you know, they, our two S&C guys are ex NRL, ex Penrith, ex Broncos. Like, they're, they're super hard guys. And um, our boys had the hardest preseason I've seen a team have in. Oh, probably since I've been coaching, really. And I thought, man, we're, we're in for a good season. You know, they're super yeah. fit. Yeah. We come out and we win 44 to 4 in the first game. And, you know, we've got that affiliation with Melbourne. You know, that gives us three, four, five Melbourne guys each week back to our team. I thought, we're, we're going to have a good year, you know. And then I remember on the Monday, Hojo called me and uh, I thought it was just a bit, you know, session plan for, for what we're going to do tonight. And he goes, mate, we're done. We're all over. They, they, they've cancelled it. So um, to answer your question, Nev, um, I'm in touch with Hojo all the time. Um, there was talk that they were going to try to get like a southeast Queensland comp, like an eight round comp going, but that's been squashed as well late yeah. last week, which yeah. which I'm kind of glad of, mate, because there's there's no money in it for the players. Um, right. It'll turn into a bit of a Mickey Mouse comp. So really, 2020 is a write off for our senior guys. Um, where it is hard, as you'll appreciate, is a lot of our guys are, are backup guys for Melbourne, so. You know, any of these feeder clubs, uh, or sorry, any of the NRL clubs that get a heap of injuries, they've got to call on guys who are, who are playing no football at the yeah, moment. So yeah. um, I know Riley Jacks is named to play for Melbourne this weekend. He, he's our halfback at, at East. That's tonight, yeah, against um, the Knights. Yeah. Yep. So Jacks is named to play half, but there is talk that Smith will go back to half and, and Brandon Smith will play hooker. But, yeah. but if Riley plays, and I hope he does, um, it means that he's effectively hasn't p- played a game since since round one, which I think was middle of March. So that's tough to come in and just be training full time. No, no footy. I mean, Jaxie's a super professional guy. He'll he'll handle it. But um, yeah. just gives you a bit of an insight into guys that have to come in, and whether it's now, whether it's in five, six weeks, whether it's ten weeks' time, off the back of no football, none, zero, and have to come into the NRL, hardest yeah. football competition in the world, and. Um, and do your best. And, mate, there could be times when these blokes have to come in off no footy and it's 12 all, the game's on the line, and there could be a game you need to win for your season and they've got to come up with a big play. Like, it's, it's really, really hard. But that's the situation we're all in. And, uh, and I suppose it would be hard, too, with all the – obviously, now yeah, because they have to get COVID tests every second day and then get their temperature checked every, you know, every 20 minutes or hour or whatever. And then yeah. – um, and obviously, being based in Brisbane, then they have to travel to Melbourne and be – so would they have to stay in Melbourne, do you think? Like, that, yeah, they pretty much would, they, wouldn't they? Yes. So they don't come to Brisbane now. So once – yeah, they're in Melbourne full-time now. So even um, – We've got a couple of guys who you won't see play for Melbourne this year, but they've been called into the Melbourne squad that have basically had to relocate their life to Melbourne. Yeah. And it's a big change too. Like you look at, um, well, you look at how Brisbane and Melbourne are and just a, a dynamic. It's a, 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 when I mm. was able to go to Brisbane every second weekend and then, and I go to Melbourne every, every few months um, for family and whatnot. And I, and I just say how yeah. much it's similar on the scale of things, but it's also a very different environment, very different, Obviously, you know, stating the obvious that Melbourne's got the AFL culture and whatnot, and then um, you look at um, and that's it's it's just hard. So you you'd hope that these boys at least get a game out of it because they're, they're sacrificing their their partners, their family, and some who yeah. might have kids. And um, can I can only imagine like we of course made mention of what the Warriors do when when they oh. had to come over here and they don't know when they're going back home. Um, but it, it just shows how much everyone's willing to put in to, to make this happen. And um, I just hope when things somewhat get back to normal, probably in the next year or so um, on a football scale, that this isn't forgotten on these players that are actually yeah. put their hand up and just say that yeah. they don't get a go. They're willing to get one down the track. Mm. And then, um, so... Um, Spot on, mate. And that's just, just to add to that, Nev. I mean, just thinking about the Warriors, and I'm in no way a Warriors fan or whatever, but 
mate, what they're doing for the NRL at the moment is unbelievable. And, and I think people are forgetting about it because it's all – everyone saw them leave New Zealand and flying to Tamworth and, you know, going to quarantine there and, and train at Tamworth. But now, mate, they've been on the Central Coast now for three or four weeks yeah. playing, haven't seen their families, staying in hotel rooms – effectively not, not allowed on their days off, not allowed to go out and have a game of golf or go for a walk or anything like mate, They're in a bubble. Yeah. And you think about yourself and your day to day life, you know, mentally how hard that would be. And they're away from their families and not even seeing partners or anything. So mate, I just know what they're doing at the moment for them to come up with two wins out of three so far is phenomenal. Like is, I think it's really understated. Um, I, I just take my hats off to the blokes because Absolutely. geez, that would, that'd be a hard one. Absolutely. And you just, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, obviously they do it because they need to get the money and get paid, but just to even just to iterate even further on your guys that are down in Melbourne, it's, yeah. um, they wouldn't be on that big money, you know? So they, they're doing it just to get it, get a start. And then, so they, they're basically yeah. giving up their lives and they're on minimum wage mm. just to, yeah. to make it happen. So that should also be pointed out too. And, and, and it also allows us to put perspective uh, and how we're, we're all living um, yep. with this virus and, and we're actually not in a bad, a bad spot at all. Mm. All right, Absolutely. brother. So I know, I know you've got, um, you've got to, um, take one hat off now and put the other hat on with the, with, um, with your young youngsters. So, um, with the kids. I'll, yeah, I'll let you go and do that. And then, um, so what's the plan for the rest of the weekend? You're going to be doing a bit more of the, bit more of the, um, the trade out the back. Yeah. No, nah, mate, I'm done with this. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll be doing, mate. Uh, the wife's going out for dinner with a couple of girlfriends tonight and my daughter who's um, 10, she's having a sleepover at a friend's house. So right. me and the young bloke, the big O, we are having a bit of a boys. We've already had a hit of tennis this morning. Yeah. And um, have a pizza and pizza and well, yep. you'll we're have gonna a few go. Beers, we're going yeah. to go for a swim. You'll have we'll a go for a dip. Yep. And then, uh, yep, I'll have a couple of beers. We'll watch the Titans game and yep. uh, we're going to go get a feed and uh, – Mate, yeah, we're, he's excited it's, for a bit of um, bit of boy time. It's it will you and me both, brother, because um, yeah, yeah, because I've got a similar weekend. Um, because yeah, the um, the missus, yeah, she just had her birthday. Was it Thursday? So we we done that on the Thursday, and now she's she's staying at Brody with her girlfriends. I'm uh, having well, she had a, a big drink on drink on the gin and all that last night. Twenty six floors up, um, somewhere in Brody. Um, and so that gives me a gives me a pass to have um now that we can bistro well yes some bistro it'll be be my second time back since it's been open and then we go and have the um get the the old nuri bar crew back together get the band back together so to speak and then um yeah a bit of bit of a fire and bit of footy and and, and just um relive old times how good is it so it must be so it's not just me so it seems to be a bit of a theme this weekend all around yeah mate i noticed um yeah, like obviously clubs and pubs are starting to reopen, but um, I don't know about down there, mate. But up here, like, you can't get in anywhere. You know, the Palm Beach Surf Pub is booked out all weekend. Crum and RSL booked all weekend. Yeah. We're at 50 here, so we're allowed 50. So. 50. And yeah. now Queenslanders are allowed to come. Well, I mean, I know we're on the Queenslander. You're the blue, and but we're obviously yeah. different, you know, a bit Super of a bizarre, race, yeah. So you're welcome, Dan, to come down. But, so the invitation to Byron is now valid. Yep. Mr. Cross, so let's um, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to plan that you, as well, and then obviously the next time that we talk, we'll we'll plan a couple of hours ahead, and we'll do that watch in um for that um 2009 yeah. grand final and relive, um, what was a memorable day at Kingsford City Park back in that um September day in 2018. Mate, can't wait. And just quickly, do we know a a commencement date for the NRRL? Do we know oh. if they're kicking off? We they had know, July 18th no. in mind. I think they're, they're yep. just um, going over the nitty gritty. I think it's been approved. Um, yep. It's Has just been, yeah. um, just a f- few other nitty gritty like with crowds and whatnot. But um, no yep. doubt uh, that will be back soon. And we'll, we'll, we're looking forward to seeing that how I think it's they're, they're changing. The, the, it's going to be a bit of a conference system. So all the Northern teams will play each other once and yep. or actually twice, I think. So the Northern teams will play twice. The Southern teams will play twice. And then, so there's still a little bit of work to do, but um, yeah, you're thinking about it in the next few weeks, we'll see some action happening. Yeah, that'd be good. All right, brother. Good stuff. Go, I mean, so stoked to be so oh so stoked um to be back on the mic with you in some capacity. Hopefully, um, we're back on the mic um at the uh, 
at a footy game one time again yeah. soon. Um, and if you haven't subscribed subscribe to this, subscribe to the Duano podcast either on the YouTube page there. So not just my nearest and dearest will be listening to it. So head on to the best way to go about it. Head over to anchor.fm forward slash Duano. All the links there for the YouTube page. We're on iTunes if you prefer um, Android. We're on Spotify as well. And we're on a number of other platforms too. So head on over there. Give it a listen. And um, yeah, and, and you'll hear what's happening in this part of the world. Crossy, absolute stoked to be back, brother. And then hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll have that watch in and, and we'll get the, um, the, give some of the people between us and the Tweed Shire to relive their greatest day in football history back from 2018. Mm. Unreal, mate. Good to see you, Nev. Likewise, bro. And so next on the podcast um, will be Trevor Osborne. Uh, he knows how to take a, amazing videos and pictures. And so we're going to discuss that. And um, he was supposed to be someone we were working with this year um, behind it in the camp. Yeah. Uh, doing the cam op. So, um, so we're going to be teaming that up over the next, uh, probably the next day or two. And um, yeah, you'll, so you'll see some real artist, artist work from none other than Trav Osborne. He knows how to he knows how to shred on the guitar as well. So um we'll be discussing all that. Uh, next on the Duano podcast. Crossy, absolute love your work, brother. Can't wait to do it again soon. See you mate. Thanks for so, your time. No worries. And that is the Duano podcast over and out for another week. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. <laughs>